But let's start talking about Wrath of Becky. Now, it's really fun to see you in a part like this. Uh, but are, are we entering, are we officially entering this Sean William Scott villain era? Can we say this is your villain era now? Villain era. Yeah, let's do a villain era. I want to do that. But there's the character is so much fun. I I love. I mean, listen, I haven't had a chance to really do stuff like this, so it's extra fun for me. And and uh, yeah, yeah, I want to do this. I want to play just villains now. <laughs> I mean, it kind of started off as like a lovable villain with the right. Movie, right, and then so, escalate slowly. Right, it's yeah, <laughs> darker and darker and darker. You know, I love it. To that point, do you, I mean, because you're not known for stuff like this, did you really have to sell yourself to the director or did they, did they like, love the idea? Did they think out and reach out to you saying, oh no, he'd be a great villain. He's ready for this. They did reach out to me, which was amazing. And I think, um, uh, and yeah, and I loved the script and I really liked the the role, but I, I actually, actually was like, I'm not sure how to play the part. I had some mm -hmm. ideas and they were awesome. They were just like the, the, the directors that were just like, really collaborative and really liked what I was thinking. And I think one of the things that was awesome with this movie was is that um, both Suzanne and Matt, the, the writer directors, um, they believed in me mm -hmm. and they kind of grew up watching some of my movies. They're early thirties. And they're like, you know what? I, I, I'd like to see this guy mm -hmm. play this type of role. So I think like stepping into a very different project and very different part, having directors who already believe in you was really great as opposed to like a director is like wasn't my top choice I don't know if he's gonna pull it off it just allows you to really right be confident about the choices you make right well it's interesting you mentioned you weren't sure how to play it what was your way in how did you eventually figure out what you wanted to do well it was his background I think I mean, the idea that I had was that he you know was a, a really serious uh ex-soldier you know the army ranger and that that informed so much about what he how he is how he reacts to things and there's a scene in the movie that i quite liked in the original script it was a monologue with me and one of the guys that we were bringing in to kind of pull off this insurrection and it was like i just had some ideas about that I thought like we could get so much information on this character in this one scene that can help just kind of create more of a threat and a little bit more intensity. And so we were able to kind of layer that in there. And, um, and the big thing was like the story he's telling this guy who feels could be um, a problem that, you know, story of back when he was uh, in, you know, on the field and ended up killing one of his own guys. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, when I told the, that idea to the to the writers, directors, and they're like, great, let's do it. You know, so it was really fun like that. It was really collaborative. Absolutely. It, it's interesting. There's a lot of humor to the movie as well, certainly dark humor. Um, and it made me realize yeah. uh, you you came up in comedies, obviously, a lot of your early 2000s stuff were, were comedies. But comedy now is in other genres. It's in superhero movies. It's in horror. It's in, you know, action yeah. like this. Is it interesting to you to see that, is, is, that, that you know, comedies, pure com comedies aren't really around much anymore in the same way they were then? No, I know it sucks for me because that's you know, it's like what I was doing, you know, but um, but it also just pushes films to evolve, you know, and mm -hmm. I think the like a movie like Wrath of Becky right. has been around, you know, because it was a clear love letter, I think, from Matt and, and Suzanne to like Tarantino and, you know, this is kind of like a Kill Bill, like 16 year old Kill Bill, you know, and like Edgar Wright movies like Kick-Ass. So that great com combination of like you know, comedy, kind of dark, like, you know, action, campy, but, you know, super stylized. Um, but yeah, it, it, as far as like the more kind of basic comedies that, you know, were, I've spent most of my career in, they're it's not really making them that much anymore. Right. So it's great for me. It's like, okay, I'm just going to keep trying to fight for parts where I you know, maybe wouldn't be the first choice, but, you know, it makes it more fulfilling when it, you know, when it ends up happening. Right. And then when you do get those comic moments in this, for example, it's a lot because you have that experience. You know how to drop it in there, you know, <laughs> selectively. It's maybe yeah. not too good with my car, but it's still fun to watch. You you, you know how to play it. <laughs> this character, though, there was not, <laughs> he, he was probably the least intentionally funny guy. 
Yeah. You know, there's a couple yeah. like things, but, but yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's exactly. Ones. You're selective, you know, you know yeah. where to drop it. <laughs> There's also a little John Wick to it too, which I love. the The, the whole stuff with the dog, obviously, could you, could, had, had put yeah. me in mind of a, there's just some John Wick elements to it as well, which I've enjoyed. <laughs> it's just weird. I actually, when we filmed it, I didn't think about it. I, oh, I didn't okay. put that together, and I'd seen John Wick and loved that movie, right. but I didn't think about it. But yeah, for sure, and this I mean, Becky could definitely be John Wick's daughter, yeah, or niece, yeah. And you're in John Wick chapter five. Somehow they'll find a way, you know, to, to, to bring you yeah, in. Exactly. Character. But that, this is your audition for that. We're going to see you in the, in the, that's right. Movie. Right. <laughs> Fighting right. with the re resurrected Keanu in the next one. Well, let's jump back and start talking about your, 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 your past roles. Obviously we have to start with American pie. Cause that's the one that put you on the map. And as I understand, I think you said originally Stifler was not as quote unquote likable as he ends up being in the movie. He was, a, he was a much more of a villain character. Is that your memory? Is that, is that how, how it was when you originally read the part? Kind of like I, yeah, I kind of just remember him being just different, and maybe a little bit less funny. Um, I could be wrong, but I, 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 but I do remember thinking like, oh, there's an opportunity to kind of add some colors to this character, and I never thought I would get the part. So <clears throat> I just kind of thought, let me just improvise and pull characteristics from my friends and make him the guy that you really you shouldn't love you know because mm. he's such an asshole but like um and then it just yeah it just kind of evolved but yeah i remember him being more kind of like i don't know more one-dimensional kind of mm. like that typical jock jerk and, and less less of a weirdo yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of the things that really makes it distinctive, I think, is of all the characters, he he's the one who never actually gets a girlfriend until movie three. He, otherwise, he, he's always boasting about it, but never actually has a love interest. So I thought that was always a really interesting aspect of this character. I wonder if it's something you fought for to always maintain that aspect of him. Well, I think it was just in there, but I remember thinking that he feels like that kind of guy who's um, always talking about sex, right. but, prob but he's probably the virgin of the group, you know, or like... Yeah, that was my main thing. It was like, he's that guy. He's like, oh, you have no sex yet? You haven't lost your virginity? And he's probably like totally inexperienced. And, you know, um, yeah. So I kind of thought that's, I because I knew those guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I know you've also said over the years, it's, it would be hard to make a movie like that now, especially with scenes like the webcam scene and, and, and things yeah. like that. Do you, do, is there, I mean, they've tried to bring it back every now and then. Do you think so they could do it in another American Pie? Do you have an idea of how you could do it now if they were to? I hope so. You know, there was, um, cause I just love the character so much. I think, you know, for a while I was like, oh, I, I feel like I kind of did everything I could with that character and I want to try to do other things. And then time goes by and you're like, I miss him, <laughs> you know? And like the idea of seeing him in his, you know, mid forties, right. Just trying to figure it out. Like, it just feels like there's a really great opportunity for another story and to kind of comment on where things are and seeing this guy navigate the world today so there might be a chance we just have to figure out exactly what that story would be make sure it's great and um so i don't know i don't know we'll see Jumping to Final Destination, I got the chance to talk to James Wong a few years ago, and he was talking about your casting. And he said that he at first, you know, didn't think you could do it because he'd just seen American Pie, you were Stifler. And he was like, can he be a dork? And, you, and it sounds like you had to convince him of that. Do you remember how you convinced uh, to win that part? Oh, I think I was just being myself. <laughs> I was like, Dude, I'm such a dork. It didn't take long. I think at right. first, like you're right, you remembered because it was the same producers as American Pie that did Final Destination. And I, I think you're right. They probably saw that character like, doesn't seem like Billy Hitchcock. And then he probably spent two minutes with me. He's like, he's good. He's right. good. He's a dork. <laughs> Definitely a dork. Clear. You're you're hired, buddy. <laughs> yeah. The scene where you get decapitated is really fun. And he sort of broke that down for us. What do you remember about that? Having like a plaster head made and all that? What, what was that experience of having yourself decapitated on film? Oh, you know, the plaster head thing, like I did not like that at all. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, um, cause they said like people can freak out, right? I'm sure people have heard about it and read about it. You can go on YouTube and see like, they do this whole thing. They wrap your head. You can't hear, you can't like, I don't think you can hear. You can't breathe. I had a full panic attack. Oh, and then I, I was like, freak it out, freak it out. And then they, they said, you're, I didn't want to say the actor's name, but they're like, you're doing better than this guy. And I was like, oh, shit. All right. Then I kind of settled into it a little bit because I was like, I got to do better than that guy. Right. But, um, 
But the other thing too, is that um, I've told the story a couple of times, actually, and you can do what you want with it, but I just remembered it when the movie came out, my older brother was in Minnesota mm-hmm. and watching it in theaters. And when my head got cut off, he had a full freak out and like threw his popcorn everywhere. And like, I found out about this because he told my mom and he ran up the aisle and went to the bathroom. He was like throwing up, freaking out, calls my mom. He's like, Sean, okay. Sean, okay. My mom's like, yeah, it's fine. She's like, he just got his head cut off. <laughs> my mom was like, um, it's a movie. And when my mom told me this, I'm like, what a weirdo. And I intentionally didn't get back to him for a long time just to mess with him. And finally I talked to him, I'm like, dude, it's just a movie. What are you talking about? What is this? Yeah. I feel like you should have mailed him uh, your plaster head in a box, like, <laughs> and just like he opened it up. Oh. And there you are. <laughs> if I had it, I would have for sure. Just, yeah. <laughs> What's in the box? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. I love, uh, I have a lot of love for Dude Wears My Car. I love dumb comedies. And I think that one, it's so hard to play dumb. It, yeah. well. And I think you and Ashton do a really great job in that. Watching it again, I felt the same way. How, how did you study to play dumb? What was what was your approach to play? It came, came very easy for me. <laughs> very easy. Playing a dork, easy. Playing dumb, very easy. Um, yeah. Now that, that was such a fun movie to make because that mm-hmm. was still in the beginning of my career. And that script was hilarious. Mm-hmm. I remember the first draft of that script was was R-rated and it was so dark and so mm. awesome. And then they made the switch to make it PG-13. It was still funny, but it was different. But um, yeah, playing dumb. See, Ashton's a smart guy. So mm. that was probably a big challenge for him to play dumb. For me, it was like, I got this. <laughs> it's in my wheelhouse. In my, zone. in my wheelhouse. I'm playing myself. <laughs> Chester Scott. Did you two invent the shibby thing or was that in the script? Was that, was that, that was in there. Okay, that was in there already. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was in there. Yeah, but they had to they had to change some things. Like, oh yeah. So like there was all these moments where they're like, yeah, obviously they realized they forgot something or they found out that they did something crazy. And they're like, man, how messed up were we last night? But in the original script, it was like, dude, how fucked up did we get last night? Right. Some things changed. Certain language change. Right? Certain, certain language things change. Yeah. I always say the hangover exists because dude wears my car came first. Like I think I think the connections yeah. are there. You're welcome, <laughs> hangover. You're welcome, Todd Phillips. Right. It's all because of me and Ashton. Exactly. No. Yeah, same concept, but yeah. right, right, exactly. I, I, speaking quickly of the Fabio scene in that too, I know Ashton said over the years that kissing you was like kissing sandpaper because you have that stubble. What can you say about kissing kissing Ashton? What do you uh, what do you remember about that experience? I remember being so like. Before I, 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 we were, we were just like, we'd always joke around right before. And we knew the scene was going to be super funny. And we knew we're like, we're going to do, we got to go hard. We got to like, we, we got a French, like, like animals. But before we were just really quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, it was awkward. And then we, the director yells action. And because I remember what you said, I'm like, how long do we do this for you? I'm like, just don't like keep it going. Just get as what you need, how you imagine it. Of course, like we just go for it. And then like uh, the director intentionally just waited forever to yell cut. And then after he we yelled cut, Ashton, and I, it was just awkward. Because I didn't want, I want to say, I'm like, was it all right for you? Was right. it cool? It was good for you, bud? <laughs> um, and then of course we did like 10 takes of it, but right um i didn't think so much about i don't know i i guess i'm still a little bit uh, affected by it <laughs> well, I'm glad you committed to it. what's that <laughs> i'm glad you're I'm glad you committed to it that's good that, yeah I'm, oh yeah fully that's committed a good kisser in the end is what you can say <laughs> anything for a laugh dude well, 2003 was your action era because that's when you do uh, the rundown uh, with the rocket. The beginning and the end of my action. <laughs> <laughs> you had a great run in that in 2000. Great jog. <laughs> I've read that The Rock stabbed you at one point with a knife. You were supposed to use a knife and he actually did like stab you cut and, cut and cut you open. What was that? What was that experience? What was that story? It was, was the, his prop knife was incredibly sharp. Mm-hmm. And it was a scene where he's supposed to like cut these ties that were like tying my hands to my, by my back. And it was like, I was like, ah, what the? And it was a clean, big cut. You could see inside. 
and and Dwayne was like so unaffected. He just closed the eye. He's like sliced him, and he just walks away. I'm like, that's all you got? <laughs> hey, dude. And then uh, and then he gave me the knife and a and then like a case with like a cool inscription and stuff like that. So unfortunately, I don't feel like I have much of a scar, but right. But it's cool, man. Dwayne cut me. <laughs> you could point to it, even if the scar is not there. Yeah, no, it's it true. It happened. it happened. It happened. I know it's there. And I've read that Peter Berg wanted uh, both you and 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 Dwayne to roll down like this enormous mountain for that for that for that for that part where you're falling down. And, and eventually, the stunt people had to do it, and one refused. Do you remember that? Do you remember the conversations about? I do it? not remember him actually wanting us to do that. Okay. I mean, because it was insane. What those? Mm-hmm. I think those guys won Stunt of the Year award. I those they literally the stuntmen threw themselves off a mountain wow. tumbled down many takes like one in the movie i think it's a shot one gets knocked out and he's like a rag doll i had no idea that peter actually wanted us to actually see Dwayne could do it but right. for me come on that'd be the end of me i can't believe he even considered it <laughs> and... he made the right choice using the stuntmen for sure the sub people right <laughs> Well, the, the other big one for that uh, year was Bulletproof Monk, where you get to work with Chow Yun-Fat, the great Hong Kong uh, action star. What did you learn from him about being an action hero? He, he's such a great, like, just silent action movie guy. I wonder what you what you yeah. learned from being him. He was also just one of the, like, one of the greatest, um, just greatest actors I've worked with. Like, just people. Unfortunately, I'm in his worst North American movie. <laughs> That wasn't intentional, by the way. Um, <laughs> right. Maybe a reason why he hasn't kept in touch. But um, but no, I mean, it was amazing. Actually, like, he speaks Mandarin, I think. and then He speaks a few languages. Mm-hmm. English, like, he knows well enough. But he remembered, learned everybody's name on that set mm-hmm. in two days. And that was a big movie. He was like, and I was like, Man, I remember your name. You know, it was like, he's, he's just a class act. But as far as the action goes, like he, one of the things he was like, really clear about is like, just do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah, there's like, actors just want to do everything. He's like, but there's a way to sell it um, where you don't really have to do, you know, use your, your stunt people, you know? Um, but it was just so much fun. I, I, yeah, the movie's not great, mm-hmm. but, um, but the experience making it was for sure. That was the end of my action era right yeah that came out i, I mean w- w- while you were making it was it one of those cases where you could tell oh this isn't quite going out as i wanted it to go or it was you, you could sort of get the sentence as you were doing it. Yeah, yeah no it was kind of clear even before like right well the thing was that it was based on a comic book and it was much darker right. and then when i came on board they're like oh let's make it kind of silly and mm-hmm. and comedic and it really changed the tone and it um and there's other things that happened too but again it was one of those things where like the movie's not great and it wasn't a good thing for my career mm-hmm. but like I have such great memories making it you know because i think that was chowing and fat's first film or first north american film no first uh, it was film. Replacement first killers, film. I think, was first, but yeah it was early on after Carson tiger right. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah yeah um so it was just like it was it was pretty awesome yeah that's amazing well i have to imagine i mean that era i've talked to several actors who were who were working at that time and one of the big roles that was always out there comic book wise was superman warner brothers was going to make a jj abrams one and then superman returns came around later brandon frazier went out for a lot of did did you ever audition were you in the mix ever for any of this comic <laughs> no, <book? laughs> no 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 <laughs> never got the call never got the email no they're not thinking that guy <laughs> they were told for months they're like yeah, we can take him off this list, this list, right. this list. <laughs> good guy. Good guy. Wish him the best. Right. Not Superman. <laughs> Not Superman. Okay. All right. I thought that maybe you just got called in anyway because they were seeing so many people. Huh? No. <laughs> Not even for a charity audition. No, I think that my, I don't even think my agent even submitted me. Even my agent was smart enough to be like, right. you're not Clark Kent, buddy. <laughs> You could have done Peter Parker though. Spider Man was also being cast around that time. Any spy? Any Spider Man auditions? Is that one that you went out for? You know what? I I, I feel like not for Spider Man, but I feel maybe I took a meeting for for like I can't remember one of the other characters. This is a long time ago. Sure. Um, and it was one of those things where I think I walked in the meeting and they're like, "Oh, oh, great. Well, well it's so nice to meet you." I'm like, "Oh, I didn't even sit down yet." <laughs> Show them the door of you. Yeah, I was like, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best. 
<laughs> that was cool. I could see Johnny Storm. That could be the one that, because that would be that era too, Fantastic Four. Maybe like I could see, maybe that would have been the one. Because he's that, funny. Yeah. And all that stuff, but yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, speaking of a very different turn, uh, Southland Tales. Now, this is a fascinating movie to me. I, and, and part of the reason is it's it's a movie that's impossible to explain. Did you understand what you were making when you were filming it? Did Richard- not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I, I met with Richard Kelly and I was like, just wanted to work with him. I just love the guy. Obviously, Donnie Darko. I was like, I, and then he was like, you know, he's like, hey, that's great. I have this project and and there there could be a really cool part. There's actually like two parts. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm on board, you know, for sure. Don't quite understand what this movie's about, but there's enough cool stuff in there that I was like, you just got to commit. You get this really brilliant filmmaker who's like taking risks and sees things differently than, than at least the, a lot of filmmakers that I was working with. And then he got together this great cast and but I remember being on set in the first scene and like, I was like, I was confused. And I called my agent. I'm like, is this a comedy? Cause I had no idea. I was like, I'm totally playing it straight. Cause I thought it was like, I just I didn't know. And so people were kind of doing all these different things. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to protect myself and try to play this thing as grounded as possible. Mm-hmm. But I ended up loving the movie. And it's so many, it's like, there's so many cool things that he did. And that movie that was like, kind of ended up happening you know but it's not for everybody but i i definitely loved it right didn't yeah. know what it was about <laughs> i couldn't explain it but you know you like it, it but i love it <laughs> the scene that everyone remembers from that is justin timberlake's music uh moment that, that that goes on for a while were you on set for any of that did you get to watch it being filmed i wasn't no it was so cool though no that sucks you're right i should have been there <laughs> but it's a really Just cool drop scene. By. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I wish it was, but right. No, no, he that was that was cool. Yeah, it was a great cast. Yeah, Sarah Michelle Geller uh, again, yeah. Wayne Johnson again. Like, yeah, I, I imagine you all turning to each other saying, "I don't know what we're doing, but it's fun to be working with you." You know, it's it's probably that sort of experience. Yeah, I feel like everybody was thinking that. Right. Nobody said it out loud, but I think we're all thinking like, "What's happening here?" <laughs> you know what? But you kind of know that's when you work with like a, a really like fascinating, awesome filmmaker. You're like. Hey, he's got a vision. And there is so many cool things. I love the movie. Right. And I do have, have a better understanding of what it's about. Maybe a couple things I'm still a little confused about, but that's the best. I don't want to be told exactly what's going on. You have to, you know, decide for yourself. Right. right. He's talked about wanting to make another one because uh, he has like this whole like chapter one through three. And, you know, he had these whole ideas for how to do it. If he asked you to go back, would you do it again? Would you? Would, would oh, you 100%. You yeah, that would be awesome. Roland Tavener. <laughs> remember my character's name right. Ronald and Roland. you had two you you, you were the two yeah. So yeah you were the two <laughs> he was the messiah i think i think i was jesus I, exactly right yeah yeah you turned out to be connected to everything so there you go you're in your Whoa. jesus era that, that that's your you're welcome era. buddy <laughs> hey once you play jesus it's like what do you do from there you know what i mean Might as well, i can't believe i continue to act it's like hey, jesus, I should have retired <laughs> The Dukes of Hazard was an interesting experience. I know you said that's another movie that started off much darker before they they made a PG thirteen, and 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 you've sort of been vocal about saying, eh, the R rated version was better. Is that do you think we we missed out on what that could have been in R rated? Dukes of Hazard, yeah. I I kind of can't remember now. I again, like I had so much fun making that movie, and um. I think that there was a version that might have been a little bit less comedic. Mm-hmm. But what the heck do I know? That movie made a ton of money too. So it's like, you know, I just remember having a terrible Southern accent. Mm. I mean, it was so bad. <laughs> even like the, I mean, the, and even Johnny Knoxville, like the director, I met the director's like, you're going to really talk like that? I'm like, talk like what? <laughs> this is my accent for the movie. It's so bad. You know, it's like it's bad when you're an actor and you're doing a bad Southern accent and you know it's bad and you don't do anything about it. You're like, I'm just going to commit to it. Yeah. right. That's why I don't really watch much of myself in that movie. (laughs) What's it like just to hang out with Johnny Knoxville? I think people wonder wonder what he's like when he's not doing jackass and things like that. What is he like just to just to be with on set on a set like that? Or and is he different now versus when he was then? Well, he's just one of the best best guys he's Mm -hmm. such a great great person and so loyal and so kind 
but also hilarious. He was, he was so funny. Like he would do things to make us all laugh. I can't tell you because, because um, I probably, he wouldn't like that. But then also he's just like naturally funny and um, yeah, he's just, uh, he's awesome. <laughs> Role Models is another film of yours I love because I, I love the way that that character starts so much, it's sort of in the Siffler realm but then gets like really emotional by the end of it like you like you really feel for him for, for Wheeler in, in that argument and I understand the movie was mostly improvised uh, due to the writer strike and things like that so w- w- did you have to make up a lot of your stuff is that your memory of doing that forgot that there was a writer strike you know um I think that like they had a really great script but definitely there was a ton of improvising and it was so much fun and I think maybe that I'm not sure if this is true, but I think David Wayne likes that. You know, he likes to improvise and just kind of let us all just have some fun with it, and he can pick what works and stuff like that. And and I remember that like I had so much fun in that movie. And but there are sometimes we would improvise scenes, and you would know like, oh, this is going to be great. And other times we were like, I don't know. And usually I'd have a better sense on other films, but I do remember when we, the last two weeks of filming, I think it was the last two weeks, we shot that ending. Right. Um, it was called Lair, or it's called LARP in real life. All the swords and stuff. <laughs> and man, I was so wrong. Cause I remember being like, oh, this sucks. Like <laughs> so, so boring. Like this is not gonna work at all. Then I saw the movie, I was like, it's awesome. It had, it was so funny, it had so much heart. All those scenes, other stuff that we were like improvising and I wasn't sure if it was going to work out. Like kind of like Wrath of Becky where Mm -hmm. you have a great experience filming it, kind of hard to get a sense of how it's going to turn out. And then you watch it and you're like, oh, this movie's awesome. So yeah, that's one of my faves. (laughs) There's a bit of internet uh, lore uh, that that probably isn't true, but I have to ask that uh, Paul Rudd supposedly peed himself on set because he was laughing so hard during a take. Do you remember if that happened and were you the were you the thing he was laughing at that got him to pee in his pants? No, I don't think I made him pee his pants. Um, I don't think I was there for that. He did knock me in the nuts hard, like hard. Like I wasn't happy because at the end when the kiss thing, I think that like my a character dies and then he comes and gives me like he's like says something and then he just. I think with a sword, something. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I. Oh, that was that was painful. But I think I got him back. I think I, I put like a, a dead fish underneath the sofa in his trailer, which which um, was upsetting for him for a while. But then he got me back, and he put like a dirty diaper um, underneath my sofa. <laughs> so, Just pranking back and forth. Yeah, right? yeah, class acts. <laughs> But no pants being, no pants. No, I wasn't there for the pants being, unfortunately. (laughs) But it is true. It did actually happen. I don't know. I I, I didn't hear that one. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I probably did. Well, uh, Goon is, is a movie that I think, you know, as much as you said, you've done your action era. That's also an action movie in addition to being a really funny comedy. So you get to, you get to punch there. Did you take real shots? Were, did, 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 uh, did they encourage you to take real shots when you could, when you were doing those fights? No. Um, unfortunately, I think I landed a couple on accident. Um, I think, did Leah? No. But no, it, that... God, again, that movie was so much fun to make, but the fight scenes were challenging because we we could only do our hockey stuff um, in midnight from that's all the time because it was during hockey season, so it was from like midnight to six or something or seven, and so we're <laughs> skating and you know they they kind of do the choreography like okay you're gonna throw like three punches he's gonna throw four punches then you're gonna throw a hook and then you throw a jab and then this and like what on skates and they're like action like ah and um. <laughs> And then it worked out. It looked really, really good. But man, it was it was challenging to film those scenes. Right, you can imagine. But yeah, and, you're right. That was a little bit of action for me. Right, exactly. You're 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 an action hero in that. You know, <laughs> I'm like taking punches, pummeling punches. I think that counts. Yeah. <laughs> the new action, the new Sean action hero, like Renis. What did, what do you call it? The the it's a new era. Right, the Sean Assance. Uh, the the Sean Assance. <laughs> the Sean Assance. There we go. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I know the <laughs> hashtag hashtag where you get going. <laughs> I, 
I, I know before Goon came along, you were supposed to make a Kevin Smith uh, a hockey movie uh, hit somebody, and that and that sort of went away. Do you think that'll ever come back? Do you and Kevin hope to ever make it one day? Is it still a possibility? I, you know, what happened was I was attached to Goon, mm -hmm. and and then I'd worked with Kevin, and then he told me about Hit Somebody, and I was like, oh, this is so great, you know. But I'm, I got this other hockey movie that um, could we might end up making. And then what happened was then they got their financing on Goon and I went and did that. And then I'm sure Kevin was like, you're not doing hit somebody, buddy. You know, like, you already did your hockey movie. It was a bummer because I was so excited. It was like, if I could do two hockey movies, like that would be amazing. But yeah, I wonder if Kevin's going to make that. I hope he does because it was awesome. Right. Yeah. But um, he's, yeah, he's not going to probably do it with me. <laughs> was it a similar tone to Goon? Was it a kind of like, again, like ribald comedy or was it slightly different? Was it a slightly different key to your memory? I feel like it was a bit, a little bit different. I, mm -hmm. I can't remember, but I remember it being pretty great. Right. Absolutely. Love Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I, I, yeah, I'm very happy that he's that he's a uh, you know he's been talked about his mental health recently, and he's and he's you know talked about his heart attack. He's, he seems like he's in a good place now, which is good to hear. Oh, he's a, but he's also just a great guy and just hilarious. <laughs> And then finally, your experience on Lethal Weapon was really interesting because you sort of come into the show after some very controversial stuff happens and you're starting to take it there in season three. What was that like sort of being the, 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 the coming into a show like that, which is sort of on wheels already and sort of replacing the, the previous lead? Oh, man, it was weird because mm -hmm. I'd never done I'd only done one episode of TV. It was mm -hmm. It's Always Sunny. Right. And so I'd never really never done TV like that never did in this show was already happening it was all this like there was just, yeah it was you know because i remember i was like never done a show where people hate you even before they've even seen an episode you're like you're not rigs you suck you piece of i'm like geez man so it was kind of like it was a little stressful and i kind of understood it too it's like this is about rigs and murtaugh you know and i got it and but i personally was just like saw it as a great opportunity mm -hmm. i forget that i did do a lot of action in that show yeah. it was like all right i just gotta do the best that i can and have fun with it this is a great opportunity um try to tune out the, uh, tune out the no noise and like um and see if i can you know use this to get other opportunities and um i ended up having a great experience but yeah the beginning was a bummer because uh, there was just a lot of hate you know, they're just like this movie. This show's gonna suck. You can't do this. And I and I was and I remember watching the first episode. I'm like, oh, we got a chance. This is pretty fun. Mm -hmm. I, I ended up having a great experience on it. Yeah. Were you sad that it didn't get another season? Because there was the chance. I, I think they were going to bring in someone else to replace uh, 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 Murta, and there was going to be like a, yeah. there was gonna be a different. It was going to be a different show with the same title. And, yeah, because Damon you know, didn't want. It. He Damon was done. <laughs> he was like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm out. Right. Was insane. And I got it. I was like, dude, I think the first, the first day of shooting, the first day Deke said to me, he's like, you married? At the time I wasn't. I go, no. He was like, that's good because th this is a marriage killer. I'm on my fourth divorce. I'm like, holy, because he worked like 16 hours a day. It's it, the grind is crazy. But towards the end, I actually was disappointed because I really loved that character. I was like, this character is so much fun you know and never had a chance to play that type of character and um but then i was like how do you do it you can't do it without damon you know this is not lethal weapon anymore so yeah yeah i was bummed a bit yeah yeah right not well. anymore <laughs> not <laughs> again anymore. is here so we're gonna get we're gonna get the shanasans come on baby <laughs> shanasans there we go <laughs> awesome all right well thank you so much sean this has been a lot of fun i really enjoyed the chat and the game yeah, it was really fun i appreciate it <laughs> Great Absolutely. to see you. You too. Take care.